Alright, welcome back to the special episode of Stitch Method. Today we're going to be doing an In the Mind of Jerry Garcia for Stella Blue Part 1. Uh, part 2 will be available on my Patreon account where we can learn more about this and do the second solo. With that being said, make sure you share and subscribe. I love uh, teaching anyone who wants to listen, and let's get right down to it. Stella Blue uh, is an absolutely beautiful song, and the chord progression is very unique. And so we're going to talk about the chord progression first to understand how to solo on it. Now the solo in part one takes place over the verse chords and uh, the part two solo takes place over an ending vamp of E to A but this video is about uh, the verse chords. So um, I'm going to show you what the chords are really quickly and then we, we've got to spend some time on it we, to understand how to kind of maneuver. And so we have an E chord for four bars ring, down to an E major seven and then it's going to go, I'm going to play it here so you can see it, it's a, it's a um, A sus4, four, four bars, which is just a D chord with the middle finger up, to an A chord, and then an E minor chord, and then a C7, beautiful chord change right here, and then to a B7 for uh, two bars, or for an A count. begins again. And so every chord is four uh, beats except for that last B, which is two sets of four. All right, so what makes this uh, chord progression unique? Now, number one, I'll tell you right now, the song is not in a definitive key. People might get huffy about that, but it is not. We have a lot of chords that change keys, which is totally fine. But because it changes keys, uh, it allows Jerry Garcia or me or you or anyone to really get a lot of color out of their solos because we're going to be chasing chords more. And so, let's look at it. The first, oh, before we say that, I want to show you something, actually, which is very important. I want you to watch this B string note, okay? Watch this B string. Say, say what fret I'm on. This is the ninth fret. Now watch, here's my E major chord. And you can see I'm playing the ninth fret. Now watch, I go to a E major 7. Now I'm on the eighth fret. Now I'm going to play my D sus chord like this, excuse me, like this. Okay, if you, if, actually like this, if I can play guitar. Okay, and the idea is um, I'm going to look at that pinky here. It's on the um, seventh fret. Okay, so right now I went, and here's my A chord. I'm going to suspend. Okay, nine, eight, seven to an A chord, six. Hope I'm not confusing you too much right now. But that note, the note in the G string, went down chromatically from nine, eight, seven, six. Let me play it one more time precisely. Watch that G string. It's on the ninth fret now. Now it's on the eighth fret. Now it's on the seventh fret. Sorry. Now it's on the sixth fret. So this first set of four chords has a descending chromatic line in it. We're going to need to know that. Then it goes to an E minor. Now I'm going to play the E minor here. Now a key I want to tell you about is that uh, the fifth of this chord is the B, the open B. That note can be found right here. Fourth fret. We gotta use our imagination here. Now you can see, well, it didn't go nine, eight, seven, six, five. It went nine, eight, seven, six, four. Okay, for the E minor, there's the B here. To a C7, three. To a B7, here it is, two. 
So inside of this song, in this progression, you're going to hear this chromatic line. As a matter of fact, I can turn a little bit of distortion on, a little bit of delay, uh, which Jerry uses. But what I'm going to do is play the chord progression. I'm going to play this descending line here for the first four chords and this descending line here for the last three chords. Let's see if we can hear it. That's something you want to pay attention to. So now let's get down to soloing. All right, so the first chord is E major. The second chord is E major 7. Now, I know this stuff, boop, boop, beep, boop, boop, but I'm going to show you, all right? In the key of E, we have uh, the first chord is E major, check. And then if we look, uh, if, if we need to extend them out to seventh chords, we can play an E major as E major 7. So these first two chords, kept my distortion and delay on. Um, are going to be uh, in the key of E. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means we can use the E major scale because the E major scale literally means that is the key of E. E major scale is a key of E. All right, and so the one I'm going to choose here just to show you is going to be the 12th fret, 12, 14, 11, 12, 14, 11, 13, 14, 11, 13, 14, 12, 14, 11, 12. Note wise, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, Sorry, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. All right. And so it is very important that we see the two chords here. The E major chord within the scale is a normal E shape located in my cage chord stuff, which should be popping up in the corner over there, in case you don't know this. And then an E major 7 chord, we're going to play 11, 12, 13, 14, like this. And there's your little major 7. There's a little... Say hello, all right? And so we're looking out to start on the E. Jerry likes to start on the E in this uh, solo. And we'll talk about a couple things right off the bat. Now I'm going to turn my distortion and a little bit of delay on. I listen to a lot of versions. You can hear some of it, so I did that. All right, so here is your 12. And here is your 14. If you bend this up to the G sharp, you get a G sharp. And the reason you want to hit a G sharp is it is the major third. It's the major third of an E. It's right there, okay? That's your G sharp. And so you'll hear Jerry come in. And then when the E uh, major 7 comes, there's that chromatic move down to the major 7. He's still going to use the E major scale, but focus on hitting some of the chord tones. So let's see if we can just get that. You'll notice that I went through the E major scale. I also did a quick chromatic run right there. Totally normal Jerry stuff right there. If you see two notes that are separated uh, by a fret or two, don't be afraid to do that. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But on the E and the E major 7, he kind of takes it a little bit slow and steady uh, in the 70s. As he gets to the 80s and 90s, puts a lot of stuff in, but we're doing more of a 70s type version. And so he's going to keep it lean, sustaining, haunting, really beautiful. And then we get to that next chord, which is the A sus4. Now, an A sus4 is just an A chord with a 4 on top of it. And so actually the three's out. The 4 comes in. I'll show you here. Um, this is my C-shaped A chord on the ninth fret. And so these chord tones are going to become very viable. When we move to this um, new chord of the A sus4, we find that he's really just using chord tones and chromatic runs. So let me show you the A sus4 that I find him using a lot. Ninth fret of the G. 10th fret of the B, and 10th fret of the high E. All, right? All it is is here's an A chord, and you put your pinky down, there's your A sus4. And so he usually either comes in on this chord, actually. Sometimes he'll just play this note, and then he's going to see the A chord tones. Again, we're still on an A type of chord. But interestingly enough, this is Jerry we're talking about. So he's going to hit this guy, and we can think A major pentatonic if you want. think of this, that's no problem, but the idea is chord tones, and if you think pentatonic, lots of chromatics, and 
don't forget the Jerry thing. I always talk about on little uh, on literally every video. Here's a root note. That two flat three three. A lot of chromatics. So if you're looking at this, this D is a very important note. And then you can hit any chord tones you want. You can also think pentatonic and move between the notes uh, chromatically. All right, and play. And then when we go to the A, we're now just on this chord again without the D, and he's going to be focusing on that C sharp usually because that's that completes that chromatic line. E, E major seven, D to the C sharp, and then we'll play. Oh. Okay, something that he does a lot is this which is sliding with the ring finger from the two into the major third, hitting the root note. And so let's see if we can get up to those four chords right now. Uh, All right, so so far we're we're hopefully we're cruising, and again, if I'm going too fast, you can rewind, you can slow the video down to 75%. I sound a little tipsy when I do that. Well, when you do that, not me. All right, and so we have those four chords, and now we get into a really cool part: this E minor. When you listen to the song, you can clearly hear the song gets darker. I'm not saying like super dark, but the song gets darker, and Jerry's pacing of his solo starts to pick up right here. From 77 to the 90s, you can always kind of hear this pickup on this E minor. And so I, I refer to this just as a mental note as the descent into madness. Uh, and so I uh, just want to hit the E minor. I say, okay, this is where we need to pick up some stuff here. And so I'm going to come back to the 12th fret. All right, I'm going to come back to the 12th fret. And I'm going to think of an E minor pentatonic first. You can also lay on top of it um, an E minor scale. Which, Jerry, you can hear him do both, and there's more to do. So right about uh, a couple seconds ago or now, the E minor pentatonic and the E minor scale should pop up, right? But um, he also, uh, really does also, uh, use a lot of this flat five. Let me show you this, okay? And chromatic runs on the D and the A string. Even comes back this way. So he gets, a, he gets a lot of ground out of this. He, you hear him like... Pick up the pace sometimes. Whatever you choose to do, also keep in note where your E minor chord tones are. There's my, it's hard to see, my E minor shape chord in the 12th fret. And so let's see if I can get up to there. And remember, when the E minor chord comes, you pick up your phrasing just a little bit, all right? And so let's see if we can get there. After the E minor 7, hopefully you're enjoying this, you're going, yeah, this is, this is cool, all right, and after the E minor 7 picks up to a C7, we don't, we don't have a key now, we're, we're chasing chords, okay, we're just chasing chords, and this C7 into the B7 is like the best part of the song, takes a lot of practice, and when I'm going to throw something at you, okay, and you've got to practice it, you just have to practice, and so, <laughs> you have to practice, and so, I'm going to do it here, we're going to take a look at a C7, I'm going to turn my distortion off for a second, uh, we're going to look at a C7 chord, um, right here, 8th fret, like the E shape, take your pinky up, put your um, pinky up on that 11th fret right there, okay, and so this is a C7, sorry, I'm going to raise my volume, alright, and so, these chord tones are now our most viable guitar soloing uh, points, but Jerry Garcia does so much stuff with this, let me show you the full arpeggio, alright, the full arpeggio, Okay, watch this. Eight, seven, ten. That's one, three, five. All right. Then D string, eight, ten. One, three, five, flat seven, one. Three, sorry, three. Ninth fret of the G. Five, eighth fret, flat seven. Pause the video if you need to. Of course, the chart is going to have this, but also I forgot to mention, the chart is going to have other positions to do this in. All right. 
so this is on the 8th fret area. I'll be discussing it up on the, probably up on the 15th fret area as well. Okay, so 1, flat 3, 5, uh, flat 7, 1, sorry, 1, 3, 5, don't listen to me, flat 7, 1, 3, 5, flat 7, 1, 3, 1, 3, 7, 8, sorry, 8 and 12. It's incredible. Jerry Garcia here does a lot, a lot of talking. Uh, you'll see him uh, chromatically run from the 3 down to the 2. Uh, an interval we haven't even mentioned, but it's there. You'll see him chromatically run from the flat 7 down to the 5 with his infamous uh, pull-off slide. You'll see him surround or enclose this major 3rd with the flat 3 and a 4. Or all this stuff, it's, it's amazing. You're, you're focusing on a chord tone and kind of dancing around and getting to it. So you, you'll have these moves. And this 1 and flat 7 here, this 8th, sorry, this 10th fret to 8th fret, I mean, this is the Jerry sound, this, this uh, um, excuse me, chromatically going uh, past that major 7. Like, and then the 5, flat 5, 4, 3, 1. And so chromatically, you're going to hear all these options. Or... I mean, really, a lot. And so I'm going to turn my distortion back on. I'm going to play my four. Uh, sorry, I'm going to play my four. <laughs> my, <laughs> that was so funny. My um, delay pedal, the patch is number four. So that's what I just said. And so let's see if we can get up to there. Okay, E. E major seven. A sus four. A. Descent in the Madness, E minor. C7, right? Okay. More to do. Now, what's very disorienting is knowing your C7 arpeggio, because all of a sudden we, go, we come down a half step to the B7 arpeggio. Nothing has changed. Everything's the same, but everything's down a half step. Now it's 7, 6, 9, 1, 3, 5, flat 7, 1. Three, five, flat seven, one, three. And he's going to do the same kind of chromatic teases. He might do some double stops based on wherever he is, chord tones. Sorry. And the idea is there's two Bs. We're going to talk about the first B. You just kind of carry in the speed of that descent into madness, as I call it, the E minor, into the C7, you're kind of running with chromatics, and then into the first B. So we got to play it again, and let's see if you can hear how, when we hit that E minor, that things get really quick, okay? Check this out. That was the first, that was the first B7. Second B7, don't worry, we're still here. But what happens is now, this B, a little music theory break here, this B is going back to an E. And in the key of E, B is the five. And the five, like, begs in music to go back to a one. It's known as a perfect cadence. And so we have this B for one bar, and that kind of celebrates the movement from C to the B. And then the second B is like, we are coming home again. And it's your job now to try and lead your phrasing back up to this E. Now, does Jerry do this all the time? Sometimes he'll lead it to the E, sometimes he'll lead it to the, to the G sharp as discussed in the beginning, beginning of this video. But the idea is that second B is your time to turn everything around and head right back home and try to build a cadence and try to build a phrase that gets you up to this E. <laughs> Sorry, that was my son. And so let's see if uh, I can show you what I mean, okay? It just takes a matter of listening and moving and understanding where that B is, using the same stuff. You don't have to be, uh, play chromatically as much. You can kind of... And 
do something like that. But let's see if I can kind of execute it. Let's see. So you heard it. Hopefully you heard it. All right. So you got to kind of build back. All right. We're on our final descent. That's pretty much it, actually. <laughs> but I'll talk to you. Um, very unique chord progression. You have a key at the beginning, and then it breaks it. And you're kind of on chord tones and chromatic runs within those chord tones. Seeing those chord shapes is important. Again, I know a lot of graphics came up, but I will have a supporting chart that has these graphics and also how to do it in another place. If you wanted to do part two, you can sign up for the Patreon uh, practice sessions and bonus lessons, and I'll have the part two solo that's over the E to the A and how to practice that. Uh, I think this video is long enough. I hope that you really enjoyed this. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them in the comments below. I'll get back to you. Um, soloing on top of this is a lot of fun, and my last parting words are put as much emotion as you can into it. I think this song is a great emotional release. You can start off with the slow kind of haunting movements and then uh, get into the E minor, pick it up, and then try to add this bubbly color on the C and the B and get back in. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure you share and subscribe. And, and uh, remember, Thursday is another Guitar Fundamental episode. I'll stop talking. You all rock. See you soon. Bye-bye.